So it is the Monday before my surgery in Bethesda, Maryland. So we have taken the subway into Washington, D.C. and we're at the Museum of the Bible. Just stepping away for a second to let you know that there are some spectacular views from the Museum of the Bible. I'm going to show them to you. So the museum is six stories. Jerry has spent two hours on the first floor. So statistically impossible for me to see the whole museum if I continue at his pace. So for that reason, I have broke off from him. I'm going to explore it with you and we'll meet up at the end. See how much he gets to see.
speak of the authority of civil government and of that submission which we owe to it, they put Christians in mind that civil government was the order and institution of God himself. That by disobeying legal government, we disobey God. It is so strange being here during the popular illness. One, this thing. Two, there are usually roaming bands of eighth graders everywhere you go, but I guess they're not doing field trips like that, right? So I ran into a group of teenagers, but that is as much as it's gotten. So it's very strange without the roaming band. It is so, so, quiet. There was a protest two days ago so I did avoid downtown and maybe everybody else was too. There were these two teenage girls who saw a display about Thomas Paine and they were like, they got their phones out, they sang the wrong part of the song, then they got the phones out and they go, I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Some people think that I'm intense or I'm insane. And then they go, hee, -hee and they, get, they stop filming on their phone. And I walk by and I go, you want a revolution? I want a revelation. And they go, oh, you know Hamilton. And I go, of course. And they go, hee, -hee -oo. So we ended up at the restaurant that was on Top Chef. It's just a totally different restaurant now. We got to sit outside. Remember the big glass doors? You remember when Bethesda was on Top Chef? It was a Washington D.C. episode, Washington D.C. season, and they had to run a restaurant out of this. What did you think about Museum of Bible? I was enjoying it, but I enjoy all museums pretty much. It's a little uh, kind of overwhelming. There's so much information being thrown out. It doesn't have as many artifacts as you would hope for. But then that's not true. They had a lot of Bibles. A lot of Bibles. It is the Museum of the Bible, right? So a lot of Bibles of antiquity they have in the property and uh, scrolls of the Torah. Yeah, so when you really think about art, like archaeological artifacts, they don't have any so, facsimiles, a lot of that. But I think it was worth uh, 20 bucks. You got your 20 bucks worth. Oh, and then some. I mean, I'm going to eventually, hopefully, go back and finish because I read everything. So I didn't get very far. You finished? History of the Bible. So that floor. It was the whole floor. One floor. That was six. Yeah. But I don't, all six floors aren't filled. But no. it was one of the main floors I finished. Yeah. Of course, we ran through the whole thing because I can do that. He can't. He needs to read everything. It's too discombobulating for him, right? Is that the feeling? Discombobulating? No, no it just doesn't do a service. I, I'm there to see the museum, so I want to see the museum. And, like, when I know there's only one thing I want to see in it, I'm fine walking back to that one thing. He can't, I mean, that's not a thing. But towards the end, he and I, we went together through the Hebrew Bible. And it was no cameras, and I obeyed it because it was an immersive experience. A little cheesy, but it was the a right level of cheese. cheese. What do you mean? Like, like, 
It's the equivalent of getting that can of cheap spray cheese. They had a burning bush and everything. The burning bush was well done. That was. That was a good... That, that part was like impressive. That, that was probably the most impressive piece was the burning bush. It was... It was everything you want a cheesy walkthrough experience to be. Just, it was all of it. The autistic kid loved it. He was a grown man, but he was a kid. And he was having the time of his life. Well, I mean, compared to me, he was young enough to be a kid. Yeah. Probably in his 20s. <laughs> Best thing ever. He was so happy. He's like, are you enjoying it? But I had a joke I was sitting on. So I was just like, just glad we weren't in Exodus for 40 years. Because, you know, I'm sitting on that line. I'm just waiting for someone to talk to me. I think it would be better if they just had printed guides, like two printed guides and handed them to you. Right, they had the electronic iPad things, and people were, I noticed that a couple people were struggling with theirs. It's like, you know, you know, we recommend this route. Well, the ladies that were with us when we went through the experience of the Hebrews Bible, they had a paper map with them. Oh, I didn't see I don't know where they found it. I wonder if they were with a group and maybe the groups got them. It's a new museum and new museums don't have the level of items accrued that a real, that a museum that's been around for a hundred years is going to have. They just haven't. Well, and then I don't know how much they spent on the Dead Sea Scrolls that were fake. So they may have lost some money on that. November 17, 2017. So that's a new museum. Yeah, it has 1150 items in its permanent collection and 2,000 items on loan. Yeah, I noticed a lot of the items were on loan, which is just, just as good to me. I want to look at a non-loan item just as much. We have a museum for Boeing back home and it's just, I went through it when it was rather new and it just isn't full. Like it just, it takes years and years and years to accumulate what's in a museum and they just haven't accumulated that much yet. So a lot of things, it was just like, like kind of a stand-in, like, oh, here's a replica or here's a, a glass thing with something printed on it. <laughs> it's not quite the same. So if you like the Bible, I highly recommend. If you're not into the Bible, you could probably skip it. It wouldn't be as interesting. You might be interested in, in history. Can you just go to the history museum? No, but I mean, this is a specific place where it talks about the Bible's effect on history. So it's, it's, I think it would be interesting even to people that aren't particularly interested in life. They talked a lot about different people from American history. So that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, in that, on the second floor, you know, it was going, it went through Thomas Jefferson, uh, Thomas Paine, you know, uh, who else? George Washington, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Like, there were a lot of historic figures. I feel like it's so new, it's not fair to rate it. I, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. What do you give it? 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10. Yeah. I, like, I like museums. No, I, I can't read it because I also haven't seen all of them. Yeah. Right. Well, and this, like, so, but then the spy museum is near there, and it's the one that you have to pay to go to, and I would give it, like, a 3 out of 10. I didn't like the spy museum. It was a kid's museum. It really was. It wasn't designed for adults anyway. For people that are really childlike, I guess. That's nice.